running the hole now.
Kelly, what are you doing? Trying to get a rock out? Are you trying to take that whole big rock out of there?
excuse me. think you, can, you might not be able to see me because I'm backlit but you probably couldn't see that flock of geese fly over. They're in a V and they're way way up in the air flying south already. It's what is it September 15, 16, 17. It's September 18th today and uh, to see flocks of geese like that and that's like the fifth flock that I've heard fly over. Those aren't local geese flying around those are northern geese that are starting to migrate south already. I haven't heard any forecasts up north far far up north like up in the arctic but uh, i'm wondering if they're getting severe weather already because that is really early i think last year i was up on the roof when the flocks were really coming down like that and i think it was mid-october like a month from now so of course that's not all the geese coming down yet but to see some this early is probably not a good sign probably means an early winter or at least winter's about to hit early up that far my buddy Terry's coming over for dinner tonight and he's bringing some moose steaks and some uh, potatoes with him. So you'll remember Terry maybe from last year. He's the guy I went goose hunting with.
Come here. Want some? Stay. Good girl, sit.
no grouse. Didn't see one. We did a big loop around the meadow. Did see one duck, a um, female wood duck, took off from the far little pond, what's left of it. But it was right back against the bush. I didn't expect it to be in such a small little puddle. So didn't get a shot. So we'll take another walk again later today. So many local geese flying around in, in addition to the ones that are migrating overhead. So I'm keeping the shotgun handy in case they fly over the trees here.
<laughs> here, cool. Just gonna put this right here, okay? So instead of using up a lot of my good wood shingles, I am going to price around and order the cheapest metal I can find to cover this thing. So that's why I built it kind of light. The whole structure is not very heavy. These uh, two by sixes, normally you'd of course put those on the uh, vertical because they're a lot stronger that way, but it's going to shed the snow pretty easily and uh, it's strong enough. So that's the way I'm going to leave it. So I'm just going to level out the ground start moving some of my firewood in here and continue splitting up new firewood. I'll put the the less seasoned firewood, the stuff I cut this year, on the south side where it's going to get year-round sun or at least uh, winter sun, spring and fall. And uh, usually a good breeze going through there. So I will cover in this north side with some horizontal or vertical small logs. I'll just uh, place them in there and uh, fasten to some cross bracing which will help stabilize the whole structure as well. So, I needed this thing. I've got firewood scattered all over the property, not under cover. I've got a couple of spots that I have it tarped over, but it doesn't breathe very well. So, it's going to be nice to get it all under this one structure. It should be able to hold, uh, be three cords, bush cords, so nine face cords on the level, about four feet high, and then could go almost double that. So, up to about six bush cords, I figure. But I'll probably never have more than three or four in there, I would think. I'll just leave some other stuff scattered around the property to dry. So I'm going to wrap this video up, or I think, right here. And uh, get back to work. Actually, I think Kelly and I will go for a little duck hunt this evening and tomorrow morning and see if we can get some, some game in the, in the larder. So thanks for watching this one. Take care. I'll see you up here at the cabin next time.